I have a great brain and these two very excellent eyes that I can see things very well with. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Animaniacs made fun of celebrities. I think there's something missing. Like talent? Cookies? What would I do with cookies? I'm your biggest fan. What do you say to that? I'd say puberty was inordinately kind to you. For this list, we're looking at the funniest jokes about famous folk and Animaniacs. Who's your favorite Animaniac? Tell us in the comments. Number 10. Seth Meyers Hi, I'm Seth Meyers, and the reason this phase is a lot on TV is no one's watching anyway. In the first Pinky and the Brain segment of the show's reboot, Brain appears on Seth Meyers' talk show after becoming an internet sensation. Myers is portrayed as only being interested in shallow goals, like chasing trends and getting a jump on the competition. I want that mouse on my show before one of the Jimmys gets him. The depiction of the late night host goes beyond a gentle ribbing. His own coffee mug reads smug, and he seems to be overly confident in stale jokes on current events, with an ever widening grin. <laughs> with a blind wig like that, you could be president. You'll get it. I'll wait. Yeesh, whoever wrote this episode must have really had it out for the late night host. Number 9. Hillary Clinton What better way to catch up with everything that's happened since the show's original run than with a song? The Warner Siblings recap covers everything from Uber and YouTube to climate change and the Iraq War. They also touch on the 2016 U.S. presidential election, showing Hillary Clinton striding confidently into the race, thinking that it'll be a piece of cake. Obama brought hope, so Clinton thought dope. 2016 should be a real breeze. Of course, Clinton found out the hard way that winning over voters was more difficult than Obama made it look. And there's a sinister shadow that keeps crossing her path. The Animaniacs also offer a simultaneously lighthearted yet dark take on the fallout that came from Clinton's loss. So Hillary finally broke that glass ceiling? No, but it certainly does feel like it's raining shards of glass all around us. Number 8. Donald Trump Huh? Who's this loser? Given the 45th president's idiosyncratic speech patterns and relentless self-promotion, it comes as no surprise that Animaniacs took aim at him in their reboot. He arrives on the scene during a parody of the epic poem The Odyssey, where the Cyclops resembles Trump, from his bright orange hue to his shameless boasting. I'm very rich. I have a great brain and these two very excellent eyes that I can see things very well with. Maurice LaMarche does a good Trump impression, but at this point, doesn't everybody? This would be higher on the list, but having come out in 2020, the Animaniacs came late to the party with their Trump material. Ah! Ah! Number 7. Vladimir Putin The Animaniacs revival has also taken on President Vladimir Putin and Russian propaganda. When the Warner siblings stumble across a Russian TV channel, they see actors playing them on a knockoff version of Animaniacs. Yet, yet, you shame our leader by underestimating reach of mighty Russian Federation. That's supposed to be me? I do not look, sound, or probably smell like that. Oh, that's what everybody says when they see themselves on camera. Their Russian counterparts are kneeling and praying to a painting of their shirtless strongman leader on horseback. He deserves king in buttons for not mention Damascus in song. Sibs? We gotta do something about these Russians. While visiting the country, the real Yakko, Wacko, and Dot take a tour of shows taping in Russia, which heap praise on Putin, including a version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and Pinky in the Brain. What do we accomplish tomorrow evening, Ratsputin? Same thing we accomplish all evening, moron mouth. Support current leader and ask no question. Number 6. Tucker Carlson How do you feel about it? That's it! Show's over! In this episode, Tuck Buckerson, based on Fox News host Tucker Carlson, hosts his own show on the Faux News Channel. See what they did there? The cable show, simply called Tuck, has over-the-top graphics with jets spelling out the show's title, along with an eagle flying and fireworks going off in the background. Whoa, that's the sugar honey iced tea, baby! Like Tucker used to do, Tuck wears a bow tie. Unfortunately for Tuck, the guests he booked, the Warners, don't want to stick to one topic and keep changing the subject. Wonder how the real Tucker would handle such guests. Boy, you've got issues, Tuckster. That's the issue. Number 5. Albert Einstein 
While Albert Einstein is struggling to come up with the theory of relativity in 1905, Yakko, Wacko, and Dot pay him a visit and try to sell him cookies. You wanna buy a yummy box of Kid Scout cookies? Cookies? What would I do with cookies? This segment is full of references to Einstein, from the famous photo where he sticks out his tongue to the equation E equals MC squared. Pretty good, Wacko, but your A always looks like a 2. There are also some good gags, such as Einstein measuring the speed of light with a light bulb and a stopwatch, and the Warners messing up his hair with a magnet, which pokes fun at one of Einstein's more eccentric traits. Number 4. Steven Spielberg The executive producer of Animaniacs, Spielberg is treated with great reverence on the show. In Hooked on a Ceiling, he was revealed to be the Pope at the end as a nice surprise twist. I like it! Hey Mikey, he likes it. However, in Jurassic Lark, an obvious parody of Jurassic Park, the writers gave him a less flattering homage by making him the John Hammond character. These don't look like reruns. Uh, well, uh, they're not. <laughs> I reanimated them. When you think it through, the analogy here is that Spielberg brought back something dangerous, something that should have remained in the past. Well, you know what? We're glad he did. Where are they going? Home. Welcome to Animaniacs. Number 3. Jerry Lewis Mr. Director acts like a big shot until something excites him or sets him off, whereupon his Jerry Lewis voice breaks out. The voice is so loud and goofy, it's fun to hear voice actor Paul Rugg do his imitation when playing the character. Don't with the hitting! I'll make it should fit! See, now that's funny. You kids do it just like that. All right, Morty, roll it. Mr. Director is more of an homage than he is a parody of Jerry Lewis, because he was deliberately silly to begin with. Ooey Gooey was his name. Oh, I ate a bug! Cut, cut! A bug I ate with little wings! Another Animaniacs character that has the Jerry Lewis voice is the clown from the Clown and Out episode sent to perform for Wacko. Oh, for the boy? Make a surprise? I just love making a surprise. Number 2. William Shatner With his stilted, dramatic manner of delivering lines, William Shatner is a magnet for impressions. And of course, Animaniacs couldn't let such an opportunity go. Oh, yes, sir. Three bags full. I think there's something missing. Like talent? In this episode, Willie Slackmer, who's based on Shatner, has signed up for a children's karaoke event more than 80 times, keeping anyone else from going on after him. Looks like an election ballot from Chile. During his set, Slackmer takes a spoken word approach to children's songs like Baba Black Sheep and John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. Whenever we go out, the people always shout. There goes John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. It recalls the bizarre way Shatner performed Rocket Man at the 1978 Saturn Awards. Brings me back again to find I'm not the man they think I am back home. Oh no, 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 I'm a rocket man. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. J Pock. This rapper's name is a composite of Jay Z and Tupac. I drive more plastic than the broken mannequin. I got more force than a boy named Anakin. Dolly Parton. The innuendo is not so subtle. I'm your biggest fan. What do you say to that? I'd say puberty was inordinately kind to you. Zack Snyder. For his distinct style, the director was called out by name. Hey, Zack Snyder. It's a seven minute segment. Move it along. Wayne LaPierre. The bun nut is based on the NRA's executive vice president. You can't do this to me. I'm a responsible bun owner. I'm proving to the world we all have a right to bear buns. Not here. This is a kid's show. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Bill Clinton Having served as U.S. President throughout most of the 90s, Bill Clinton was the subject of a few Animaniacs political jabs. But the reference to Clinton that comes to most fans' minds is him wailing on the saxophone for the intro in the show's first season, referencing a talent that he has in real life. <laughs> During 
sing the catch-up song, the Warners bring back the reference when they show they've got to move on from the 90s, with Clinton emerging from a fountain where the Warners were reenacting the opening to Friends. Oh, update us please and put us babies cause we run out of jokes about the 90s. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.